Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before we begin, just want to be sure that you guys can see my screen, hear me loud and clear. If you guys can do the both of that, please leave a comment in the question box below, right? Fantastic. Thanks, Roberto. Thank you. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, more importantly, you guys can see the slides, right? Not, not, not my face, okay? My face is not the one that uh, will give you guys the slides, right? Okay, uh, thanks, thanks. Okay, so let's let's begin, right? Today we're gonna to be covering some uh, candlestick patterns, okay? Uh, thanks, James. And before I start, I just really have to go through this disclaimer. Understand that the information contained in this material is really intended for general advice only. It does not take into account your investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs. Now, FP Markets has made every effort to ensure the accuracy of the information as at the date of this webinar. Understand that FP Markets does not give any warranty or representation as to the accuracy, reliability, or completeness of the information contained in this material. Now, having said that, it is uh, my duty as the presenter to ensure that the things that I share during the press during the entire duration of the presentation is accurate at time of the presentation. Okay. So with that, let's begin. This will really be our agenda for today. All right, uh, I will uh, I just want to get a sense of the, the what well, quite a number of attendees. I just really want to get a sense of the, the, the people in, in this room, right? Uh, what is your experience level when it comes to technical analysis, right? I, I know I do see some familiar names, right? And I do know that some of you with these names, you guys are already pretty experienced. So Gary, Craig, you are both um, pretty experienced. Okay, so we have uh, some experts in our midst. Uh, for those of you, okay, um, some intermediate experts. Okay, intermediate, right? Novice. Okay, not not to worry. All right. So what I really want to, um, okay, so um, some of you are basic, really new, but getting the hang of it, confused with certain topics. All right. Uh, hopefully we do get to these topics that you're actually confused with, so that we can help you along in your uh, analysis journey, in your trading journey, right? Um, so I just want to put it out here right now that uh, really today's session is really more for beginners to intermediate, all right? Um, so for those of you who are really experienced, who are really advanced, uh, please bear with me, okay? Um, and, and I hope this also serves as a good refresher for, for those of you who are advanced and experienced, all right? And like all my other presentations, okay, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to just um, fire your questions away, drop it in the question box, all right, and, and, and I will do my best to just uh, reply you guys uh, on the go, okay? I, I don't like to keep Q&A all the way to the end. I like to keep it interactive um, between myself and the uh, attendees in the webinar, all right? So it's a bit more of a personal touch that way. All right, so this is really the agenda for today, okay? What we will be covering. I will start off with the anatomy of a candlestick, okay? Um, reversals and breakouts. Now, uh, some of you may be wondering why reversals and breakout, uh, uh, what has it got to do with candlestick? Now, um, I'm going to put everything um, <clears throat> into a big picture for you guys. So hopefully, uh, you guys get to follow me in the big picture. As well, all right. But this is important. This starts off the the basic foundation of understanding candlestick patterns. And then I will cover the top single candlestick pattern. So it's one candlestick pattern. And then I'll cover the top double candlestick pattern. And of course, the top triple candlestick pattern. Now uh, there are many candlestick patterns in the world, right? Uh, if you read the Candlestick Bible by Steve Neeson, Japanese candlestick that book, okay? Uh, it's um it's sort of like the Bible for candlesticks. Right. Um, there are many patterns. All right. Um, I struggle to say these are the top patterns that I'm going to be sharing with you because uh, th these are the top patterns uh, that I feel works the best. Okay. So this is really my own, uh, based on my own experience. Okay. Uh, and if you guys have other patterns, all right, that works for you, use them as well. All right. Okay. So in the essence of time, we it's really tough to go through all the famous single candlestick pattern, double candlestick pattern, triple candlestick pattern, 
all right it's it's a very broad topic all right so i've really narrowed it down all right to 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 keep it simple keep it easily digestible okay so let's begin now the first thing is the anatomy of the candlestick all right and it is really a very simple uh picture of uh of, of the candlestick that we that we have here okay uh for those of you who who uh who are not clear all right um there are many ways that candlesticks can be presented okay some of you who look at institutional reports all right uh, institutional reports tend to use black and white okay so um uh uh, uh black bars is 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 for is for down and then white bars are for up okay bullish candlesticks and bearish candlesticks all right the more generally accepted ones is green for the bullish candlestick and red for the bearish candlestick all right <clears throat> so this is these are the different parts of the candlestick and and we break it down like that okay so i'm going to bring up my pen tool give me a moment okay yeah so let's first look at the bullish candlestick all right uh bullish candlestick okay now the bullish candlestick starts off with the open over here okay it opens over here and then it closes higher so bullish because price has closed higher than when it first started for that session okay if this is if we're on the daily chart then one candlestick represents one day so that is one session right if we're on a four hour chart one candlestick represents four hours okay so and so forth if we're on a one hour chart one candlestick represents one hour all right so assuming we're on a daily chart now okay this bullish candlestick shows that price opened at the low okay and it fluctuated throughout the day and then after that price finally landed here at the close of the market okay so price started at the low and went all the way and closed at the way up okay <clears throat> so the space between the open and the close forms what we call the real body all right forms what we call the real body the difference okay so then we have the upper shadow and the lower shadow what what is this shadow right and another term for it is the wick okay because when we're talking about candle okay the, the candle normally has the wick right so the upper shadow and the lower shadow we can also say is the upper wick and the lower wick right uh what this really means is that uh price opened here and possibly pushed down to the low rejected and came all the way up to the high got rejected and ended up at this final point here all right the next slide will show you guys a lot clearer okay the opposite is true right so uh everywhere that the shadow that the body that along the candlestick which doesn't have the body all right we call it the shadow or the wick okay and it's just it's just it just shows price rejection for that session okay so on the daily it means that yes price did reach this high however price was rejected lower all right at the same time okay on the daily price did come to this low but it was rejected it bounced higher and it pushed even higher okay the opposite is true for the bearish candlestick right we have the bearish candlestick over here okay price started off at the open price starts off high okay it can push higher all right but all that matters is that at the end of the day okay if this is the daily chart at the end of the daily session price ended much lower okay so price ended on a close okay so price ended lower than when it opened and the this the distance between the open and the close is the real body okay and i already went through the upper shadow and the lower shadow all right these are basically rejection on that time frame okay so i hope you guys are clear all right uh when i show you guys the next slide i think it's going to be easier to understand how candlesticks are uh being formed all right so this let me just remove all drawings okay so for those of you who uh, do a lot of charting right you guys will also have been exposed to line charts okay which generally shows only the closing prices okay and you guys will also be exposed to ohlc charts right ohlc is really just the abbreviation for open high low close right so it's just looking at open high 
low and closing price of the market. Okay, so imagine again, we are on the daily chart, right? <clears throat> How the candlestick move will be, the candlestick, let me just change the color again, okay? The candlestick open at this session for the bullish candle, it opened at this session. There is a possibility that price pushed all the way down to the low. It got rejected, price traded all the way up to the high. It got rejected and then the daily session ended here. So if this is the daily session, you go down to the lower time frame, you would see this sort of price movement as drawn by the green arrow or my pink arrow. Now, having said that, price is also possible for price to start off with the open, okay? Suddenly go up all the way to the high, gets rejected, comes all the way back down, gets rejected and goes all the way back up again and ends off at the close. All right, so this is probably a day with very, very high volatility prices just whipsaw up and down. Okay, so that is also another possibility. All right. <clears throat> and the opposite is true for the bearish uh, the bearish candle as well. Okay, prices start off at the open, trades higher, gets rejected, comes all the way down, trades lower, gets rejected at the low and ends the day just a bit higher than the low. So it closes over here. So that's how price move. Okay. Um, when we are looking, when we break down the bearish candlestick and the bullish candlestick, okay? And if you go down to a lower time frame, you will see the line chart drawn like how the, the green arrow and the red arrow is represented over here. Now, so how does this form uh, the open high-low close? Open high-low close is just as simple, right? Let me just change the color. So looking at a bearish candlestick, price open here, okay? Price open here, push to the high, Okay, it push to the high, comes all the way down to the low, okay, and then after that, it closes over here. So open high, low close is really just one stick, right? Uh, if I were to go to the charts, just quickly show you guys the, the charts. Okay, just let me change. All right, so I'm going to show the open high, low close, right? If I would just zoom in, pardon the drawing, okay? Right, so the open high low close is just like that, right? If we are looking, this is the daily session. This is a bit irritating. Okay, this is the daily session, right? If you are to look at this candle, okay, this bar, what it means is that price open here, right? Came down and then push higher and then closed over here. And that is how we get the open high low close bar chart. Okay, and that is how it's formed. So because price open and close higher, you have that green color bar, right? Which basically just tells you it's a bearish, a bullish session. All right, so let's go back to the slides. So I hope you guys are clear with how price moves on um, uh, uh, with regards to the candlestick, okay? <clears throat> and when we know how price moves, this is where we go on to the next part, the second part of today's presentation, reversals and breakouts. So anybody wants to try to uh, give me a example, okay? Uh, what is the difference between a reversal and a breakout? Anybody wants to try? All right, it, they are different. Just what is the difference? Okay, it, it, it's okay, right? Uh, we we're here to learn, right? And so just 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 give it give it a shot. Okay, so I've got some uh, replies saying that breakout is trending market. Any any other any any other one of you? Okay, so another one is breakout is past previous high or low. Reversal is bounce in opposite direction. All right, so okay, so we also have reversal is a change of structure. All right, so so based on this uh these replies that that I'm getting, thanks uh Magoon and James, thanks a lot. Right. Uh, you guys are not wrong, okay? Uh, but the terms that you guys use are not uh, specific enough. So for those of you who have gone through the CMT uh, program or the CFT program, uh, breakouts, okay, is basically when market, okay, uh, moves uh, out in uh, out of a consolidation phase, okay? So uh, Prat, you're right, okay? Breakout will be in the context of uh, resistance and support. Yeah, so a breakout happens when price moves out of a range, out of a consolidation, okay? So that is a breakout. A breakout can either be a bullish breakout, it can 
breakout to the upside, or a breakout can also be a bearish breakout, which means prices breaks out to the downside. So breaks, breakout can go in both directions. Okay, so not entirely correct to say that breakout is only happens in a trending market. All right, a breakout may signal the start of a trending market. I say may because a breakout has to happen with a reversal, right? Then maybe there's a change in a trend. Okay, so breakouts generally do not give any indication of directions. Okay, reversals give direction. Okay, so let's take a look at it. All right, so a reversal happens when price completely changes direction. Now, some of you, I, 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 I kind of figured while preparing the slides, right? Some of you may, may, may think, you know, um, oh, Isaac, how do I actually uh, tell that, um, you know, price has completely changed direction? Right. One of the better way of confirming that price has changed direction is the using, uh, if you guys were to use Fibonacci retracements. So I have the picture over here. All right. On the left hand side. Okay. If you guys were to look, there is a bearish reversal. Right. So it's a reversal. Like I say, a reversal. Let me just change the color again. A reversal happens. Okay. When price completely changes direction and it is confirmed when price has retraced more than 100% of the original move, right? So the blue lines in the picture here are the original move. So let's say price, okay? Let's say price is, uh, let me choose a different color this time. Okay, so let's say price is, the original move is upwards, right? So it's an uptrend, okay? So, and price starts pulling back, okay? So this move is completed, which is why I drew the Fibonacci starting from this point. This is point one. Okay, I drew, I draw it upwards in the direction of the original move, right? So I draw it here and my Fibonacci ends over here. My Fibonacci retracement ends over there. So point one to point two is a retracement. And you can see when price starts pulling back to the 50%, okay? It means that price has done a 50% retracement of the original move. So let's say you travel... Um, from point A to point B, all right, from point one to point two, and then you walk backwards half the journey, right? You essentially, price has retraced, you have retraced 50% of your journey, right? Now, if price were to continue retracing, okay, and goes, oh, sorry, I lost that. Okay, and price will continue retracing and goes beyond the original point, beyond the original point one, this would then mean that it is a reversal. It is no more, it is no longer a retracement. It is a reversal. Okay, the opposite is true, right? So this is a bearish reversal. The opposite is true for a bullish reversal. Sorry, I missed out a letter H over here. H is uh, hiding. Yes, H is shy. All right, uh, but the opposite is the same. All right, so the original move, okay, from point A to point B, all right, is that price move down right so price has completed its move right from point one to point two i draw a fibonacci retracement in the direction of the original movement right point point one to point two all right and then when price bounces and goes the other way and surpasses the hundred percent the original point right price has completely covered back the hundred percent and moved beyond this is when a bullish reversal is said to be confirmed. All right, so reversals are best um, confirmed for me uh, when I use uh, a retracement. Now, the only trick here is understanding where is the original move, right? Because the retracement, there are always a lot of points to draw retracements all over the charts, okay? So the only trick here is to figure out where the original move starts from. Okay, and, it, and how we find where the original move starts from, it's always best to use line chart. Okay, this is the easiest for us to see. All right. So, uh, so okay, so James, you're asking, right, what kind of time frame am I on for this or is it all time frames? It's all time frames, all right? Uh, if you are trading, if you're trading on the, if you're trading on the one hour, right? If you are intraday trader, you trade on the one hour, four hour, 30 minutes, okay? Uh, then you would be looking for uh, at, at this kind of time frames, right? For, for, for a reversal, okay? Uh, otherwise, if you are a swing trader like myself, all right, then you'll be looking for 
reversals on the four hour, possibly even on the daily chart. Okay, of course, uh, scalpers tend not to look for reversals. Uh, yeah, they tend to look for retracements and they play off the retracements. All right, and, and they try to find strong support levels and then they scalp that few pips of it. All right, so that is reversal. Okay, so I hope you guys are clear about reversal. Now let's move on. Breakout. So like I mentioned earlier, right, uh, a breakout can be in any direction. There is no bullish or there is no one clear direction for a breakout, okay? When, 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 if, I'm sure some of you are on signal groups, right? So if you guys actually go to those signal groups and suddenly you see this message, oh, um, oil has a breakout, okay? You won't even know what direction it, it's, it's going in, okay? Um, they can say a bullish breakout, right? Yes, yeah, you can have a bullish breakout, but is it a reversal? You won't know, right? You really wouldn't know, okay? Or you can, you can say, okay, it's a bearish breakout, but is it a bearish breakout that leads to a reversal, right? You, you also really won't know, okay? So breakouts can be in either direction. Now, it happens most often after a consolidation or a chart pattern, all right? So the goal for today is to try to combine all right, breakouts with reversals, especially after a strong candlestick pattern. All right, that's, that's the goal for today, okay? So it's a bit of a mouthful. So today's goal is really to combine breakouts with reversals and confirming them with a strong candlestick pattern. Okay, so this is a sideways breakout, it's a consolidation. So markets are trading sideways, right? You have the support resistance, bullish breakout, right? Price trends upwards, goes sideways, and then after that, suddenly it just booms to the upside, right? That's a bullish breakout. The opposite is similar, bearish breakout, price is trending downwards, like, right, it's a trend, and it bounces. This is a small retracement, it goes down again, another retracement, it goes down, and suddenly, boom, the market pukes, vomit, blood all over the floor, right? You see a sea of red, bearish breakout. All right, so this is a continuation, right? It, this can be a con continuation, but this happens after a consolidation, okay? Now, the opposite, uh, the, another scenario, I would say the opposite, uh, another scenario is, you know, uh, break up with a reversal, right? So, the original move, price comes all the way down, okay, it does a retracement, right? Does another retracement, all right? And then you see that, you know, price consolidates sideways, sideways you have a single bottom, a double bottom, a triple bottom, all right, it breaks out, okay, it breaks above this uh, resistance, it breaks out, and then it surpasses the original, okay, the original move, all right, 100% of the original move, that is when you get a bullish breakout with reversal. Now, this is where you can say with high probability that, look, it's time to go long, this is where I'm going to go long, just look for opportunities to go long, okay? The other scenario is the same, all right? Bearish breakout the other way, all right? Original move, it goes up, it goes into a sideways consolidation pattern. It breaks out only when it surpasses 100%, okay? It retraces more than 100% of the move, right? That is when we can say that there is a bearish breakout reversal, okay? A bearish breakout that leads to a reversal, it's confirmed. And generally over here, it, over here I draw in line, so it's like a triple top. But it normally happens triple top, double top, head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders. And if you zoom in, sometimes you can even see bearish engulfing, bullish engulfing, hammer pattern, all right, uh, three black crows, three white soldiers, all right. These are the patterns that I will be covering with you today. All right, so I, I hope that as, we, as I start piecing it together, step by step, you guys are starting to see the bigger picture. All right, so... Hopefully, no questions uh, for reversals and breakout, and I've ex explained it clearly. Um, and I really want to go through the candlestick patterns next. All right, no questions. I just give you give me uh, thirty seconds. Okay, no questions. Let's move on. Now, top single candlestick pattern. So one candlestick pattern. All right. Of course, if I had to choose, I would say the hammer, right? Um, looks a bit like Thor's hammer when you hold it upright, okay? And then the opposite is an inverted hammer, okay? So a hammer is 
basically a candlestick that has a very small real body, right? So you see the body over here, very, very small. Okay, the open is very close to the close. Okay, the open is very close to the close. All right, so we all, and the lower shadow should be at least two times the height of the body. All right, so this one for me, guys, I must say it is really a guideline. Okay, it is a guideline. And we always know that uh, theory is one thing, real life doesn't always stick so close to theory. Okay, uh, my, my favorite jive at uh, the fundamental guys would really be, look, you guys have your EMH theory, but you know, if, if, if you guys have your EMH theory, the FAs are out of job, I'm out of job, right? It's that simple, okay? But I really prefer to believe in adaptive market hypothesis. Okay, so back to this. This is really just a guideline, all right? The ideal hammer just has a very long shadow or a very long wick, okay? So you can see that this area here is very long, all right? It's long, okay? And the hammer pattern, it does not matter whether it is a green candlestick or a red candlestick, all right? It doesn't matter whether it's a bullish or a bearish candlestick. All that it matters is the position of the hammer, all right? If there's anything that I want you guys to take note of today, is this very uh is this phrase that I'm gonna keep repeating? All right, it's called preceding trend. All right, to confirm a reversal coupled with a candlestick pattern, you need to have a preceding trend, right? So this is very important. Preceding trend. Okay. So yes, uh, Prat, you're right. It is a reversal pattern, but if it happens in the middle of a trend, okay, it is not a reversal pattern. All right, it is not a reversal pattern. Okay, it is just to mislead you. It is a red herring. It's really just there to confuse you. Okay, so a hammer has to happen at, okay, the bottom of a preceding trend. All right, yeah. So it has to happen. Sorry, to hear that, James. Okay, I'll. Uh, I learned the hard way as well. Okay, uh, my, my dad likes to likes to tell me, you know, uh, smart people learn from another person's mistake. Uh, not so smart learn the hard way. So unfortunately, I guess he's telling his own son that his own son is not so smart. All right, uh, no offense to you, right, James? Okay, so we need a preceding trend. Okay, let me just quickly show you guys on the chart. It's gonna be a bit tough to find. Uh, 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 a hammer pattern okay so a hammer pattern it has to happen uh at the end of a preceding trend okay and it generally happens at the end of a downtrend okay it generally sorry it generally happens at the end of a downtrend so we need to look this is a euro dollar on the on the daily so i, I need to look for a strong downtrend right okay so just give me a moment i just really need to look for downward market okay arguably right i can say okay no i'm sorry i would not say this is a hammer right this is not a hammer okay i think this is actually a morning star pattern right okay arguably i would say that this is a hammer arguably all right arguably okay I would say that this is a hammer. Why? Because there is a strong downtrend, right? There is a very strong downtrend, all right? And there is a hammer. Now, the open is not so close to the closing price, right? The open and the closing price is not that close. However, you can see that there is a very long wick, a very long shadow, okay? So I can accept that that is a hammer, all right? So this is a, a hammer pattern is something like that right something like that the opposite is an inverted hammer now if an inverted hammer happens at the top of a trend okay like over here this is a perfect inverted hammer right and you can see okay there is a very strong uptrend right that started all the way back here it just starts all the way and then after you have an inverted hammer coupled with a bearish engulfing right that is a strong reversal signal Okay, and then after that, of course, there's a breakout, right? Price consolidated sideways, look what happened, there's a breakout, right? This tells me that, hey, look, you know, trend is reversing, okay? So yes, price started making lower highs, 
okay lower lows all right so there was a small downtrend over here okay so that is uh how we identify hammer okay it's really it takes a bit of a hindsight bias right and i would also say that this could be a possible hammer because of the long tail okay and the open and close is very close to the body what i do not like however is that the body right should be closer to the top okay the body should really be closer to the top all right then it will be a nicer hammer and after the hammer you have a bullish engulfing and then price just continues upwards okay so a hammer is actually uh, pretty easy to identify it happens at the end of a trend but it needs a preceding downtrend okay so a hammer occurs at the end let me just bring up my pen okay it happens at the end of a downtrend so it needs a preceding downtrend okay and it happens at the end sorry the bracket end of a downtrend okay so james you're asking how do i tell when the trend is ending okay so uh well to how to tell when, whether a trend is ending of course you cannot just tell it like that right uh, if anyone can do that the guy is probably a millionaire billionaire or, or, or probably a, a guru sitting somewhere in a mountain cave all right but what you can help what what you can uh what can give you better uh probability is looking at momentum indicators like macd right uh macd is a very good momentum indicator okay look at the gradient of the moving averages all right so that is also a good indicator to tell whether the trend is losing its momentum okay and then after that you wait for uh, a breakout okay coupled with a reversal and then you can enter in the direction when when the trend has changed the direction okay so it takes a bit of different factors to get that confirmation all right it's a bit of a science it's also slightly a bit of an art okay okay so with that that is the hammer let's move on to the next one which is the next uh which is what i think really works very beautifully uh double candlestick pattern okay so uh as you guys probably would have guessed it right my favorite double candlestick pattern is the engulfing candle okay this works for me it really works very beautifully again 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 you need a preceding trend Right? If there's anything that you guys are going to go away with, I kid you not, the word preceding trend is just going to stick in your head. You guys are going to go off with this. All right, we need preceding trend. Okay, so bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, right? You need to look at the candle color. Okay, a bullish engulfing happens at the end of a downtrend, a preceding downtrend. You see a bullish engulfing, generally, that is when price will reverse. Okay, the opposite is true for bearish engulfing. It happens at the end of a preceding uptrend. All right, you have, it goes into a bearish engulfing. First, a green candle followed by a big uh, red candle that completely covers at least, okay, at least covers the body of the previous candle. And then that is when you get the reversal. All right, so an engulfing candle, engulfing candles, bearish or bullish is a two candlestick pattern. All right, where the second candle engulfs the real body of the previous candle. Now, I know of people out there who are very strict, right? They, they say that, okay, the body of the, okay, so for terminology sake, right? Let's call this, right? Candle number one, candle number two, okay? So there are people that are very strict that says that the real body of candle number two has to completely cover the entire body not just the body of candle number one but also the wicks okay the shadows all right so it has to completely cover this it has to completely cover this so then this would not be a bullish engulfing now it can happen in the stock market right where you have pre-market and then the orders are coming in all right and that is why sometimes you see uh the bullish engulfing or bearish engulfing candle body can really cover the entire um candle number one candle including the wick including the shadow Right. However, because the FX market is a very, um, very liquid market, right? Uh, trillions uh, of, uh, of orders are being processed every single day, right? Uh, you get very little slippage, okay? And the markets are open 24-7, no, 24-5, okay? 
and you get very little slippage, okay, the open price is generally taking, taken off the closing price of the previous session. So it's very hard to find a bullish engulfing candle or a bearish engulfing candle that covers even the shadow of candle number one. All right. So I really love this pattern. Let me just uh, go, go to the charts quickly. All right. Uh, okay. David saying uh, there's no sound. Can you guys hear me? Okay, if you guys can hear me, then uh, unfortunately, okay, okay, great, great. Uh, then David, you might want to log out and log back in. Okay, I'm just going to type since you cannot hear me. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, so uh, Pratt, you're asking, so the wicks of the candle engulfs the wicks of the previous one. Um, ideally, yes. Okay, ideally, yes. Right, uh, like I say, that is theory. Right. Uh, many times in real life, we do not see that happen. Okay. So let's quickly go to the charts. All right. So I have euro dollar over here. Okay. It works in any time frame. I can even go down to the one hour time frame. Right. I can go down to the one hour time frame. Just want to show you something. Right. So over here, okay. We have. I'm just picking points. Right. We have a. Okay. Look. There's a hammer pattern. Right. Okay. So price goes up. Okay, but it comes down and then of course price consolidates here, right? Price consolidates here, whatever. Price goes all the way up to a high. Look at this candle over here. What do we have? We have a bearish engulfing. Right, we have a very clear bearish engulfing. Now, to answer your question, okay, look at the wick of candle number two compared to candle number one. Okay, candle number two wick doesn't cover Okay, it doesn't even go above the wick of candle number one, right? However, the body completely covers the previous body. Candle number two's body covers candle number one's body, All right? So this is an acceptable bearish engulfing. And look at the color of the candles, right? It's red. It's green followed by red, right? So bearish engulfing happens at the top of a preceding trend, right? Happens at the top of a preceding trend, and then after that, it comes back down, right? So there's a bearish engulfing. Okay, let's look for another pattern again. Look, look at that. Price goes all the way up. Okay, bearish engulfing again goes down, comes back up. I'm just identifying the pattern, right? I'm not, I'm not combining this with any uh breakout or reversal yet. Okay, so price goes back up, another bearish engulfing, and look, price tanks all the way. Okay, so over here, price goes down. There is no bearish engulfing. Right, uh, no bullish engulfing either. Okay, price trades sideways until you see another bearish engulfing. Price drops lower, right? Of course, it goes lower, but it doesn't go much lower because if you look to the left, there is a consolidation area, right? A very strong consolidation area, which is why price bounced from there. Okay, so you 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 cannot just depend on candlestick pattern alone. You have to combine it with various other um uh, uh technical analysis method. All right, so you have another question. Does the rule apply in case if the both candles are of the same color? Uh, no, I would say it's not, okay? If, it, if, if both candles are of the same color, you, you most likely will get tricked, all right? So it, this, this is where the color of the candle is very strict, okay? The position of the candle has to happen at the end of a preceding trend, and the color of the candle has to be very strict, all right? So bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing works amazingly well. Okay, so you have it on this on a one hour, very strong downtrend all the way down. Look what happened. Okay, bullish engulfing candle, right? Bullish engulfing candle. But how do I confirm the breakout? How do I confirm that it's a reversal of a trend, right? If it's hard to see, there is a pattern here. You guys want to give it a try? There is actually a chart reversal pattern over here. Okay, I'm just going to draw it here. You guys want to give this a try? What chart reversal pattern is this? Okay, yes, James, you're right. Generally, it's a wait for consolidation, breakout, confirm the reversal, trick in the direction. All right, James, you, you got the steps right. So practice it on the demo account and get used to it. Yeah, so Prat, you're right. There's a head and shoulders pattern. Okay, 
So this is the left shoulder, this is the head, followed by right shoulder. All right, and the neckline is like that. Okay, if it's hard for you guys to see, change it to close, you can see it clearer. Okay, so back to this chart, right? Okay, we have a downtrend, a very strong preceding downtrend, all right, that goes into, I'm just saying on this time frame alone, right? It's an inverse head and shoulders, yeah? Uh, Peter, you're right, it's an inverse head and shoulders pattern. A very strong preceding downtrend, right? Price goes into a, 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 a left shoulder, goes even lower. Now, there is a bullish engulfing here. There is a bullish engulfing here, right? Look at what happened. Price goes higher, pulls back, not to worry. But this is a huge consolidation area. What I will really do is actually my consolidation will expand further because I don't like how price okay, moves sideways in this area here. All right? So, preceding trend goes all the way down. Chart pattern is formed, inverse head and shoulders confirmed by a bullish engulfing. There is a breakout of this zone, right? A breakout, okay? And then what happens? If I were to draw a trend line, okay, if I were to draw a trend line, right? Try to touch as many candlesticks as possible without cutting the candle body. There is a reversal. Right, there is a reversal. It's a trend line breakout, pullback, rejection. Okay, and look at the original move. Yeah, look at the original move. All right, if price enters the head and shoulders, the inverse head and shoulders, the original move, this is the original move. Right, you see the original move, and look at the retracement. If I were to do a retrace, if it's hard to see, we can change the line chart. You can see that there's one drop here. Okay, you can do a retracement high to low. Just going to highlight the 100%, 0 to 100%. Just give me a moment. Okay, so you see price has completely reversed above the 100%. All right, and exactly you're right. Okay, breaks trend line, right? There's a break of a trend line. It retests the trend line. In fact, it retests this entire consolidation zone. This is really the best place to enter. You can enter in this zone here. Right, you can completely enter in this zone here. You just change the color, right? And of course, where your target is going to be, you can play to the 61.8, but for me, generally, I prefer graphical overlaps, right? Look at that. You can literally snipe the profit, and I'm pretty sure it falls in line with a Fibonacci retracement as well. All right, close to the 50%, holding in between 50 and 61.8, right? Which is why I always prefer to put uh, my levels at graphical level, okay? Uh, for me, price action is really king. All right, so this is really combining, right, uh, what I shared with you guys, okay? Original move, okay, a uh, reversal goes into a chart pattern. You see a candlestick reversal pattern. You need a preceding trend, right? And then a breakout, all right? So a reversal with a breakout, high probability trade. Trade in the direction of the new trend. All right, so that is essentially how it is. Okay, so engulfing candle can work in uh, any other uh, markets as well. You have this, is the FX market. You can look at gold. Okay, so gold is, uh, yeah, you can see uh, engulfing candles. All right, uh, of course, a bit of a hindsight bias, but you see you have a bearish engulfing candle here. All right, you have another bearish engulfing candle over here. Okay, bullish engulfing. A bit harder to find you need to look at it at the bottom of the trend okay you don't really have a bullish engulfing here but there is a inverse head and shoulder pattern again consolidation breakout of the trend line unfortunately this one you cannot trade on the pullback right this move is really way too strong okay but bullish engulfing this one i will not consider it a bullish engulfing okay you if looking at it alone yes you can say bullish engulfing but you need a strong preceding downtrend Right, so you need a strong preceding downtrend. I will not consider this, right? So you have a strong preceding downtrend over here, okay? And look at this. All right, there are two chart patterns here, okay? This one, you can consider a tweezer bottom followed by a bullish engulfing. Okay, so it works on gold as well, all right? And if you want to look at stocks, let's just say what's the hot stock right now. Um, I have no idea. Okay, Tesla, look at that. 
on the one hour, you have a bearish engulfing price is dropping. You can even go on to the daily. Right on, on the daily, it's a bit harder to see over here at points of reversals. Okay, what about the month, the weekly? All right, so the weekly, there is a bearish engulfing over here. Okay, you look at that, it's different for stocks, slightly different. Like I said, there's pre market. Look at that. Okay, there is actually a gap, right? The real body actually covers more than the real body of candle number two covers more than just the body of candle number one, it even covers some of the week. Okay, so you see there's a bullish engulfing over here as well. Bullish engulfing, right? Slightly acceptable, though it doesn't completely cover the body, right? Still acceptable. It's a bullish engulfing. Okay, let's look at uh Apple. Okay, so uh, Magun, you're asking why why do stock charts have gaps? Okay, uh, it's actually a very unique characteristic of stock charts. It's because of uh, pre market and uh, uh, pre market orders, right? So if let's say uh, example, just now we use Tesla, right? Uh, the market uh, before the market opens at nine a.m. For example, before the market opens at nine a.m., there are a lot of orders coming in from the institutions, from the retail. Right, they are saying, okay, look, let's buy, let's buy at this certain price, let's buy at this certain price, and then there are people selling um, at a certain price, okay, and then the exchange will match the price, and when the market opens at nine a.m., right, the first price that it's exchanged at is normally printed onto the chart. Okay, so the the key characteristic of stock charts is that there are gaps and you will hear people that trade stocks right you'll hear that price likes to cover the gaps okay so gaps are actually hidden support resistances when it comes to analyzing stocks okay so just take note of that okay that is another topic for another day all right Makun? but I, for now i hope i've answered your question james you're asking what are tweezers okay tweezer top tweezer bottoms are also another sort of uh, uh candlestick pattern Okay, tweezer top pattern, right? Uh, just a quick Google, you'll be able to find tweezer top, tweezer bottom pattern, right? Um, they are reversal pattern. You need preceding trends as well. But I find that they do not work as well as bearish and bullish engulfing, which is why I decided to use bullish and bearish engulfing instead. All right, so James, I hope that answers your question. Okay, and very quickly, let's move on, all right, in the interest of time, right? Sorry if I'm rushing a bit because, uh, like I said, uh, it's not easy to cover so many uh, candlestick patterns in one session, right? So, top triple candlestick pattern, okay, uh, would be the very famous three white soldiers, three black crows. Now, for this reversal pattern to work, what do you guys need? What do you guys need for a reversal pattern to work? All right, if uh, at this point you guys do not get an answer, and um, <clears throat> I think I think I've wasted a lot of saliva. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, thanks, Sal. Thanks, uh, Grimmy. I hope I uh, pronounced your name correctly. You need a preceding trend. All right. Okay, so. So for Sal, you say the P word, right? P trend, okay? So yes, preceding trend. All right, James, preceding trend, okay? So I hope you remember that, all right? All reversal candlestick patterns, you need a preceding trend. Okay, if there are no preceding trends, they are not reversal candlestick patterns. All right, so three white soldiers. Three white soldiers is a reversal pattern where the first and second candlestick have both the same high or same lows. Okay, uh, please take this with a pinch of salt. It is, uh, it is uh, like I said, theory doesn't always signify what happens in the market. Okay, it's more likely to reversal uh, to signal reversal when it happens at the top of a bo or bottom of a trend, preceding trend. Generally, long bodies. Okay, so we have right price coming down, strong downward preceding trend. Okay, and then you have three bullish three consecutive bullish candlesticks all right that is actually the three white soldier reversal pattern okay 
And if you do candlestick blending, you combine these three sessions into one, right? You is essentially have one candlestick that opens here and close all the way here. So what, what does this become? This becomes a big bullish candlestick that covers, okay, this previous session, this previous session, and this previous, it covers the three previous session, right? So it becomes a big bullish candlestick if you blend it, right? Um, but if you don't blend it, it's really just three white soldiers, okay? So, of course, for me, the three white soldiers, right, uh, over here, I would really like to see the body, uh, the open, okay? So let's, for naming convention sake, candle one, candle two, candle three. I would like to see the open of candle two, all right, at least at the 50% level, okay, of candle one, and candle three open at least at the 50% level of candle two, so somewhere in the middle, all right, but uh, in real life, it is not always at a 50%, all right, so let's quickly go over to the charts. Okay, so, uh, okay, wait, I need to erase all these drawings. Okay, so let's try to see whether there's a reversal. Uh, I think, I think there was a Singapore stock where there was a reversal. Yeah, so you have it here, right? There's a Singapore stock on the weekly. This is DBS, one of the major banks over here. Now, I remember there was a reversal at the top, right? So price went all the way up, right? Preceding trend, strong preceding trend. All right, very huge bearish engulfing candle. Can you guys see? Okay, very huge bearish engulfing candle right here. So there's one reversal pattern. All right, it's a sideways consolidation area over here. Okay, and then you have a one red candlestick. Okay, so it's a bit hard to see. Just let me zoom in for you guys. Okay, you have one red candlestick. All right, the open of the second candlestick is at about 50% of the previous candlestick, so it's acceptable. And then after the third candlestick, okay, it didn't open at the 50% level, it actually opened at the close of the previous candle. So very bearish, right? So you have a three black crow pattern here. It's the opposite of three white soldiers, right? But look at that, what reversal chart pattern you have over here. You have a double top, a break of the double top, okay? On a retest, you can enter for a short and you can actually play to the 61.8, retracement of this last move, right? 61.8, even tap the 76.40, right? Very nice, take profit level, double top pattern, bearish engulfing, three black crows confirming it, double top reversal pattern, okay? Price broke out, right? So all the stars are lining up for that shot, okay? So this is a three, three, three black crows. You can also see um, another three black crow pattern over here very strong bearish momentum. I would say generally this is an uptrend. How would I How would I know? It's not a strong preceding trend, but it's still an uptrend because we will draw a trend line. That's what trend lines are for. Price is still generally making higher lows, right? So strong preceding uptrend, or not strong preceding, but a preceding uptrend, followed by this one, two, three, three black crows, and it just continues tanking, okay? Now, Let's look for three white soldiers. Look over here. Okay, there is an uptrend, right? Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't, a three white soldier should end at the end of a downtrend, right? So it doesn't happen over here. Uh, this is just a bullish breakout. Okay, there is a three black crow here again, but this is a failure of the three black crow pattern, guys. This is a failure because why price doesn't reverse. Okay, so candlestick patterns do not work. 100% of the time, all right? You need a lot of other confirmation as well. Okay, so I'm trying to look. Okay, so on the shorter term time frame, okay, this can be a very strong, this can be considered a strong preceding trend. If you, this on the weekly, but if you go down to the daily, this will be a strong preceding trend, right? So let me just go to it. Okay, so you cannot see it here, but it's actually, oh, there is actually the fractal nature of market, right? So you can see a tree, white soldier, reversal pattern in close, not much, but three white soldier is clearer on the weekly, right? It's definitely much clearer on the weekly. Okay, three white soldiers. So let's not look at the stocks. Okay, let's go to another FX pair. Let's say pound yen. Okay, so I'm trying to look for trends. 
Okay, let's look for trends, a very strong trending market. Okay, so there you have it, right? Strong, very strong uptrend. All right, price goes into consolidation. What happens? Very strong consolidation. The first candlestick that you have, <clears throat> okay, is a bearish candlestick. Candle number one is a bearish candlestick. And then after it follows with a drop and another drop. Now, like I said, okay, um, three white soldiers, three black crows. Ideally, I like to see the open at the 50% mark, right? Uh, but because the FX market is so fluid, normally the close of the previous candle is the open of the next candle. So it closed here, it opened here, when lower, it closed here, it opened here, when lower, right? So you can actually enter on pullbacks and go for a short again, right? So this is a bearish, shows a very strong uh, bearish reversal, right? You see a very strong preceding uptrend, okay? Followed by a double top pattern. Within the double top pattern, there is a bearish engulfing followed by a three black crows and it just hangs all the way down, okay? So three black crows work as well. Let's look for three white soldiers. Okay, this on the weekly. Let's go down to the daily. Yeah, I'm looking for strong downtrends. I would accept that this is a strong downtrend. Okay, and then market goes into consolidation. And then on, on the breakout of the consolidation, okay, on the breakout, it's not confirmed yet. On the breakout, you have three white soldiers, okay. But I'll say that the real move starts from here. This is the original move, so you can do a retracement. And then over here is where you get a confirmed reversal, right? At this point, you get a confirmed reversal because price has surpassed the 100% mark, right? So price breakout close above, that's a reversal. So it's a breakout that leads into a reversal. All right, so consolidation, breakout that leads to a reversal, you can look to go long. All right, so uh, this is really the three white soldiers, three black crows pattern. All right, uh, in the interest of time, James, you're asking, so I draw trend lines on an uptrend, I draw below, downtrend, I draw above. Yes, generally, that is how we get an idea of how uh, the mark, whether the markets are trending. So you start off with the biggest time frame. You start off with the biggest time frame. Okay, and you just see whether the markets are trending higher or lower. All right, so over here, you can see like, for example, okay, market is trending lower, right? It went lower. However, now there is a breakout. Okay, there is a breakout. Okay, but is this a reversal? Don't forget this is a monthly. So I won't say that this is a reversal yet, right? Where's the original move? High to low. Okay, it has to go above the 100 then it will be a breakout leading to a reversal, okay? So that, but this is on the monthly, so you're going to wait a really, really long time if you're trading on the monthly for pound yen. Do this, this, this method works as well on the lower time frame. all right? So trend lines really helps to identify where the breakouts are. It actually allows you to pick the, 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 the it helps you get in on the breakout earlier, all right? So the best that I really like is, uh, trend line breakout with a bullish and bearish engulfing. That, that is really the, the, the best for me, okay? So I hope that answers your question, James. All right, so with that, uh, we have come to the end of uh, today's uh, presentation, All right? If you guys have uh, any question and uh, any question that uh, I can try to understand, all right, uh, I mean, any question that you guys would like me to explain, uh, I can spend the next one to two minutes with you guys to, to just try to answer you guys. Otherwise, all right, you can actually go to FP Markets while, while, while you guys are sending in your questions, all right? You just let me go through some housekeeping stuff. You guys can go to fpmarkets.com. At the top bar, you can go to resources and under resources, there's this education column, click webinar, and webinars will bring you to the webinar page, all right? So you can actually register for the webinars over here. All right, so I would be doing one on April 27, talking about day trading strategies. Okay, so with that, if you guys would like a recording, okay, if you guys would like a recording of uh, the, the, the today's webinar, I, I'm thinking 
you have to email support at fpmarkets.com, right? Email this, this email, very, uh, very important. You have a very helpful lady to help you guys. Okay, support at fpmarkets.com and say that you would like a recording of today's webinar uh, and the topic is really top candlestick pattern by Isaac, give the date as well. All right. So just take a, I'm leaving it here. Um, take a screenshot, okay? Uh, take a screenshot and, and, and you can try emailing uh, uh, them, okay? Okay, so last question for the day. In the last pound yen example, can I explain the original move again? All right, not an issue. Let's go back to pound yen. Okay, so pound yen, okay? Now, just a very quick way of identifying original move, right? How I look at original move, okay? Let me clear the charts. I look for original move by, I started out you looking for original move by looking at line charts first. So it's really areas of big movement, right? So what it means, this is an area of big movement because from here, price made a very strong push up, okay? So to know whether price, okay, is making a reversal, I need to do a retracement, okay? From this low all the way to this high. Right, and price came all the way down. It tested the 88, and then after it started bouncing. So this is not a reversal. This is just a retracement. Okay, but if price were to come all the way down, all right, and go beyond the 100%, I would say that this entire move is a reversal. So the market direction has changed. Okay. So back to just now example. This area was the start of a down move, right? It was the start of a down move. So I'm going to do a retracement from this point in the direction of the trend, high, below, all right? And to wait for a reversal, to be sure that pound yen on the monthly is reversing, okay? So right now, price is still downtrend for me, okay? It's because price has reacted at an 88%. But if price were to go higher, break higher, above the 100%, it would mean that price has reversed, okay? Because now price has formed a higher high, all right? So in an uptrend, prices form higher high, higher low, downtrend, prices form lower highs, lower low. All right, so uh, Grime, I hope uh, I've explained the original move clearly again. So there are original moves all over the markets. You just have to mark them. If you really want to trade, you have to mark them based on line chart. That was really how it started out, right? So it started here. This is a strong move, goes all the way down, right? So in a big, big, big picture, all right? So shorter term, if price goes down, starting from here to here, it surpasses this 100%, I would say, yes, price has reversed. But really, has price reversed on a much bigger time frame? No, because this is a strong downtrend, right? And if I were to do a retracement from the high to the low, even though price has reversed this, uh, re has done a reversal for this trend, right? Price is still within a retracement of this bigger one. So even if it goes up, okay, the only target that I see is this 61.8. All right, so that's a very long term picture for pound yen. Okay, so I hope I answered your question. All right, so once again, thanks so much, everyone. I really appreciate you guys spending your time with me. Uh, have a great day ahead. All right, if you guys are over here in Singapore, have a great evening ahead, right? Have a good dinner as well. And until the next time, I will catch you guys again. Trade safe, stay safe, and take care. Goodbye.